I'm going to show the installation of a gyro on a small foamy airplane. The one that I have uh, here is a uh, Depron Airfoils 300. Okay. And this is the Detrim GY48V. I get these uh, from hobbyparts.com. And it's got two cables coming off here with three connections. This connection here, this goes to the servo. So the servo for the ailerons, and in my case, I've got a Y splitter. So this will drive um, two servos through a Y splitter. You have to provide the Y splitter. Uh, and then these connections here, this goes to the aileron connection on the receiver. So you would unplug your Y cable or your aileron uh, uh, servo you would unplug that from the receiver and you would plug this in instead and then you plug your servo connections into here. This is the gain wire. This controls whether it's rate mode or heading hold mode. You can see um, my other videos in, in, on my, the website at mycoolrc.com to look at the difference between uh, rate mode and heading hold. But this is going to plug into, and I've got this plugged into the uh, gear switch uh, on my uh, Spectrum uh, transmitter. So when I flip the gear switch I can basically control how the gyro is going to act. Okay. Mounting. Uh, what I have done is I put on a uh, light ply plate and I epoxy that uh, to the fuselage on this profile foamy. Uh, mounting is all up to you. What's important is that in, in the case of this kind of a gyro, I call this label up because in helicopters uh, you'll see pictures with this gyro with the label facing, uh, facing up when it's controlling the tail. But the axis of rotation that it senses is in this direction. Okay, So this gyro needs to have the label facing forward or you can have it facing backwards. Uh, but the plane of the bottom of the gyro needs to be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Okay, fancy talk, right? In any event, if this if you mount it like this, okay, then you're gonna be fine. If you if you mount it crooked, it's not gonna work right because uh, changes in the elevator will affect it and make the aileron move whenever you pull on the elevator. Okay? So that needs to be basically straight, okay, with the airplane perpendicular to this surface. And what I've done is I've used some 3M indoor-outdoor tape. Let me zoom in here. There we go. And you can see the 3M indoor-outdoor tape in between the gyro and the plywood uh, plate. I find, found that tape to be uh, very good. Sticks very well. You need to have it going onto a clean surface. It, it sticks to plywood well. These gyros are very light. Um, the older gyros had a metal case. And that's still been holding fine. The new gyros have this plastic case, which makes it lighter. There's, the cases are nice and square and have a flat surface. That's another reason why I like this uh, Detrim GY48V gyro for the airplanes, is I can mount, I've got flexibility in the mounting. Okay. Uh, in this plane, I've actually got two other gyros. I happen to have a, um, a mystery. Uh, G401B that's on the rudder and then I've got another GY48B on the elevator um, but continuing with the ailerons I've got that mounted it's taped on there uh, if you want to tape and strap that's fine um, I found that on the airplanes in rate mode vibration doesn't make a huge bit of difference uh, but you can use a foam gyro tape just make sure that you've got something uh, that it's gonna stick uh, I do not, I repeat, do not recommend the 3M foam tape that is white foam with the white with green uh, Scotch 3M release paper. I do not recommend that. I just had too many uh, incidences where friends have told me that they've mounted the gyro with that and then it uh, fell off in flight. Uh, as the th 3M indoor outdoor Scotch tape is gray with a red uh, plastic release film. That works really good. Clean surface. Once you got it mounted, you need to push on it. Um, let me go ahead and plug things in and I can show you how it operates. 
Now for the gear switch, this is set up so it's got a travel adjust of 100% and 100%. So in one direction it's going to end up being heading hold and in the other direction it's going to be rate. On this gyro and many gyros, um, the instruction manuals will tell you how uh, it's, uh, it indicates rate or heading hold in the case of the GY48V. With the light on, it's in heading hold, and with the light off, it's in rate. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to verify that this aileron moves in the correct direction. When I lift up this wing, this control surface should move up, okay? Okay, so it's doing that. And I'm going to take the camera and... Uh, get a better view of that okay so if I lift up this aileron excuse me if I lift up the wing okay you're gonna see the aileron go up while I'm lifting it up so while I'm lifting up the wing the aileron should move up when I'm lowering it the aileron should move down okay if that is not correct you're not gonna reverse it in the uh, transmitter you're gonna reverse it with the switch there's a switch on here and the switch on here says DIR if that aileron is not moving correctly you, ch you flip that switch and then you test it again I'm gonna test my aileron uh, throw going in the right direction if I move left then the left, aileron, uh, the left aileron moves up which is correct and then opposite okay so I know that everything is okay there my recommendation is not to use heading hold mode uh, when you're initially uh, trying out gyros. My recommendation is to use rate mode. Uh, so what I've done is I've set up my uh, my uh, transmitter here and I've, uh, with the switch up it's in 30% uh, for rate mode. Um, and that's the amount that I suggest, suggest that you try it out in your first flights. You'll know that you have too much gain when you're as fast as you can, a high speed dive. If the wings start fluttering on you, excuse me, if the ailerons start fluttering on you, then you have too much gain. Okay, if, you, if that happens in your, in your test flight, you need to reduce throttle, pull up, reduce, that's reducing your airspeed, okay, uh, and then land and then reduce the gain on your, uh, your gyro. I'm also going to show you how to set this up so that when you flip the switch, the gyro is basically turned off. And um, there's some other characteristics that off mode, but if you have a problem in flight, you can turn the gyro off um, uh, and maybe uh, recover from whatever problem that you have. So I've got my uh, my switch so that up is um, up is rate mode, down is heading hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the heading hold gain and um, I'm going to set that to zero. Oh, by the way. In the, in the Spectrum DX7, uh, it, there's a helicopter mode and there's a thing called gyro sense. I'm not in helicopter mode, I am in airplane mode. Um, I've got the gain channel hooked up to the gear switch. My, tr my travel adjust is how I am setting up uh, the gain. In some transmitters, instead of travel adjust, it's called endpoint. Um, uh, some older, uh, Radios, they might call it ATV, adjustable travel volume. That's all the same thing. This is not the same thing as SWASH AFR, uh, which is a helicopter specific thing. So I've set that travel adjust for the uh, heading hold position of the switch down to zero. I'm going to switch over to the uh, sub trims and I'm going to go to the gear channel. And I can increase or decrease the sub trim on the gear channel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the gyro. Okay, so right now I am switched into heading hold. My heading hold gain is zero. My sub trim of the gear switch is zero. And um, I am going to adjust the sub trim on the gear channel, which is where the gain of the gyro is connected to. I'm going to adjust that until the light turns out. Okay, so I'm clicking to adjust the sub trim on the gear channel. Right now I'm at plus 13. Okay. And I'm looking at that light. Okay, the light just went out and I'm going to go a couple more clicks. 
All right. So what's going what that's going to be is the down position of my switch for the gear is basically the gyro is off. Up is on. What is off? Well, it's not truly off. What it is is it is a low gain value in rate mode. Okay, and then now I'll illustrate with the uh, airplane here. I'm in rate mode, and you can you can hear that as I move the the airplane, the servos are are going. And when I flip the switch down, all right now nothing's happening with the with the servos. Okay, if that gyro were to come loose or or something like that then you could flip that switch and the gyro is going to no longer affect the, uh, the, the, the airplane. Okay? If the gyro were to reset or the gyro were to uh, you know, just totally fail, I mean, that's not going to help things. The same thing with the, you know, if the servo were to fail, you know, not, you're not going to recover from that. Um, so that's basically how I, uh, I like to set up the aileron gyro on an airplane for the first flight. There's a lot of other things that you can you can look at, and I'll get into uh, it, look around on my website for other uh, things, other characteristics uh, with the gyros on the ailerons. But this is the basically um, how I like to have people or myself set it up for the first flight.